Hello, welcome to QUT News. Hello. Hundreds of Queenslanders have said their final goodbyes to former Deputy Premier Terry McEnroth. The 68-year-old was honoured at a state funeral today, the service moving the current Premier to tears. Labor Party legend Terry McEnroth has been remembered as a loving husband, father, friend and colleague. His state funeral was held in the heart of his beloved Chatsworth electorate and was attended by a long list of dignitaries, including Peter Beatty and Quinton Bryce. Terry McEnroth earned his place as a Labor statesman. He was a lion of the Labor movement, a legend. An emotional Premier delivered a tearful farewell to the man who was an instrumental mentor in her early political career. He has left Queensland a better place. Goodbye, my friend. Thank you, Terry. Family members remembered the man behind the politics. As his nephew, I saw the softer side of Terry. His devotion and great love of his family, his loyalty to those who stood beside him, and his generosity. McEnroth held eight ministerial portfolios over 13 years and oversaw the Fitzgerald inquiry as police minister. Hundreds have turned out to celebrate the life of the man known fondly as the Fox. He was described as a master tactician, business leader, but most importantly, a loyal Labor statesman. Terry McEnroth's death came just two weeks after he was diagnosed with a lung tumour. Grant Hayes, QT News. Former Prime Minister Bob Hawke is keen to get home to his cigar and crosswords after being admitted to a Sydney hospital. A spokesperson told the media the 88-year-old was fine and is in for some minor tests. The former Labor leader has been hospitalised before with pneumonia in 2011 after travelling overseas. Uh, imagine when you're 88 is, um, is something which would concern you, um, but most importantly the entire Labor family, I'm sure everybody in this building, uh, wishes Bob the best. Mr Hawke was last seen in public a week ago at the swearing-in ceremony of Western Australia Governor Kim Beasley. He's expected to be discharged within a day or two. Treasurer Scott Morrison is promising tax relief for Australians and more money for aged care and infrastructure at tonight's federal budget. There is concern the budget may not contain enough saving measures to reduce our debt. In an attempt to win voter support, the Treasurer and his Finance Minister are making their final pitch before their pre-election budget. Keeping taxes under control, keeping spending under control. But not everyone is sold. Former Treasurer Peter Costello is concerned at the lack of focus on reducing our growing debt. It took us 10 surplus budgets to pay it off last time. Accusing the government of simply passing on the problem. All you're doing is you're putting a burden on future generations. The proposed measures include tax relief for low and middle income Australians. Those who earn less than $90,000 a year are set to receive an extra $500 annually or $10 a week. It's a plan for lower taxes and for reducing the pressure on households. Not everyone's convinced. Looks like tonight's tax cut won't be a hamburger and a milkshake. You'll have to take your pick. There'll be multi-billion dollar improvements to aged care to help older Australians live longer at home. We'll welcome improvements, but this is a government playing desperate catch-up when it comes to aged care. And $24 billion for road and rail projects, creating more jobs and helping ease congestion. Improving the opportunities for all Australians to live in a stronger economy. While the main themes of the budget have the support of both major parties, the hidden saving measures put in place to offset this extra spending are yet to be revealed. Despite this, the government has predicted the budget will be back to surplus by next year, one year earlier than promised. Claire Bowie, QUT News. Queensland lobby groups are waiting with bated breath to see what the federal budget has in store. Key stakeholders shared their hopes ahead of the reveal of the all-important document. Queensland lobby groups are hoping Canberra has their interests in mind. From tax cuts to aged care and disability support, each are hoping the Turnbull government will deliver. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry Queensland say they're looking for organic growth for the small business sector. But essentially, we're looking at sustainability in the budget, making sure that it is able to start moving into surplus and we've seen in the 2018-19 year that could come forward by 12 months. 
Australians with a disability will get more support to find a job with the federal government announcing $300 million for extra disability employment services. People with disability want meaningful jobs, they want real jobs for real work and at the moment across the Australian workforce people with disability would make up far less than 10% of our total workforce. Anastasia Palagé says Queenslanders are being ignored by the federal government in favour of southern states. Brisbane's Cross River Rail project tops Queensland's federal budget wish list, but they already know there's no money coming for that. The Premier and her Treasurer say they will continue to fight for Queensland's fair share and are criticising the Turnbull government for repackaging old money as new cash. Mr Turnbull has already announced funding for three major Queensland projects. The rest will be revealed within hours. Lauren Rediex, QUT News. Communities in Brisbane's east are hoping they're not left out of tonight's budget. Funding for the new Brisbane Metro North and South Rail Link has sparked new calls for a better public transport in the eastern suburbs. The age-long campaign for more buses across Brisbane's east has been revitalised after the federal government announced it will cover one-third of the cost of the Brisbane Metro. <laughs> Labor says a move is necessary to ensure our public transport infrastructure can accommodate the increasing demands in the eastern suburbs. We can't be building more and more lanes um, on, the, on the roads, so we need to look to public transport to be that solution. The MP is campaigning with Redlands Mayor for the State Government to undertake a business case for the Eastern Busway. If approved, it'll offer a direct line from Kapalaba to the city, providing Bayside residents with the chance to shave minutes off their daily travel times. We're calling on it in our petition with the, the Mayor, um, Karen Williams, to get that ball rolling. Let's move that uh, from the Main Roads Department um, into Building Queensland and have a business case. The Eastern Busway has the potential to expand into the Redland District. Residents are urged to sign an online petition to raise awareness. With the Bayside population expected to rise, nearly 50,000 before 2035, residents are calling on the government to tackle Brisbane's already congested roads before it's too late. Thomas McLaughlin, QUT News. The Banking Royal Commission has claimed another three ANZ scalps. Two directors at the embattled wealth manager, Vanessa Wallace and Holly Kramer, have stepped down ahead of Thursday's annual general meeting. Shareholders had planned a protest vote against them. AMP's longer-serving director, Paddy Arco Piance, will step down at the end of the year. A man has been charged by police following an incident at Mount Cutha. Police allege the man rammed a police car. At around 4.20 this morning, police identified a stolen vehicle during regular patrols around Mount Cutha. As police approached the stolen Audi A6, the driver of the vehicle drove off and, in an attempt to flee, collided with the nearby police car. The 30-year-old man continued his wild ride, crashing the vehicle near the bottom of the Mount Cutha road. Police were quick to arrive, but the alleged thief again fled, this time on foot. His getaway attempt came to an end when the man was found by a police dog. The suspect was treated for minor injuries by ambulance officers at the scene and was later taken into custody by police. The Anala man has since been charged with one count each of unlawful use of a motor vehicle, willful damage of police property, dangerous operation of a vehicle and obstructing police. Police are now in the process of contacting the owners of the stolen vehicle while their investigations continue. Georgia Indian, QUT News. Updating today's main story, the Lion of Labor, Terry McEnroth, is laid to rest. The Premier close to tears as she remembered the good times and the hardest part, saying goodbye. And ahead, dramatic pictures of the terrifying journey of lava from Mount Kilauea. Overseas now, and at least 31 homes have been destroyed on Hawaii's Big Island as Mount Kilauea rumbles. A steady flow of lava continues four days after the volcano first erupted. The oozing mass of lava consumes everything in its path. Roads, vehicles and homes, and it hasn't stopped. This abandoned car at Puna, one of many claimed by the slow-moving volcanic mass. 
Almost 30 houses have been destroyed after the Kilauea volcano erupted last week, releasing molten rock and dangerous levels of sulfur dioxide. Residents and tourists in the area have been advised to stay away. 1,700 have already left their homes. Authorities warn it's still too dangerous for them to return to their home, with tremors recorded hourly. Thompson Calland, QUT News. Vladimir Putin has been sworn in for another six years as Russian president. Mr Putin's fourth term came months after more than 70% of voters backed him in an election with no serious challenges. The chiming of the Kremlin's clock tower marks the arrival of a new president, but this one has done it all before. 5,000 guests attended the latest inauguration of Vladimir Putin. State media broadcasts Putin being interrupted by a phone call, alerting him that it was time to leave. It was then a long walk to the waiting cavalcade and procession to the palace. This is Putin's fourth term as president. Added to the two terms he served as prime minister, he's held some form of power in Russia since 1996. The event was less grand than in the past, with a smaller motorcade and shorter speeches. Putin spoke on improving domestic affairs, addressing poverty, and backing a powerful military. Security and defence capability of the country are reliably ensured. We will continue to pay necessary and constant attention to these issues in the future. Putin compared Russia to a phoenix, saying the country was capable of rising from turmoil. Domestic opponents have accused the president of undermining democracy. Denica Hill, QUT News. Protests have broken out in Beirut after reports of voting fraud in weekend elections. An independent candidate was suspiciously knocked out at the last moment. Supporters of Lebanon's independent candidates gathered to protest reports of election rigging. Women's rights activist Jamana Haddad was forecast to win right up until Sunday afternoon. Results confirmed her loss yesterday. Haddad is demanding answers after election monitors were asked to step out of the registration room following an apparent technical error during vote counting. Uh, wait for system. Protesters say they asked to be inside to observe but were denied. Haddad is a controversial figure in Lebanon with a long history of criticising Arab culture. According to her supporters, the votes were rigged when government officials realised she would win. The allegations come amidst reports there were more than 7,000 polling violations on the day. Despite this, the National Democratic Institution has insisted the election was well run. Haddad says she'll file an official complaint. Tegan Matthews, QUT News. In AFL, the Lions remain winless this season after a last-minute goal from a Collingwood rookie. It was a pulsating contest at the Gabba as the lead seesawed between the two teams. In the end, it was a seven-point game, the Magpies snapping the hardest. In the second, Brisbane shook off a poor start, kicking four goals to take the lead. Berry, blind turn, gave to Taylor. This is for the lead. The Lions are in front. That lead was short-lived with Josh Thomas and Darcy Moore scoring four at the other end to put Collingwood back in control. Thomas from 48. Looks pretty good off the boot. So after four Lions goals in a row, Collingwood respond with three in a row. In the final quarter, Collingwood came out of the block strongest, but it was all level in the dying stages of the match. Brisbane rallied and equalised late on as Dane Beams kicked a 50-yard goal against his former club. It's sailing long. It's there. But it was the Magpies who had the last say, a behind and a goal at the death to seal the victory. Collingwood now move up to ninth, level on points with Melbourne, while Brisbane remains second from bottom, still unable to register a win this season. Thompson Calland, QUT News. The Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs aren't having a good week. Their coach has been hit with a five digit fine, and two key players could be leaving the club over salary cap restrictions. Coach Dean Pay is being fined $25,000 for an outburst at a referee during Thursday's game against the Broncos. The Bulldogs are reportedly struggling to balance their 2019 roster with a limit of $750,000 to spend across the team. And that could mean double trouble for key players Brett and Josh Morris. Here and, and that sort of thing. And I think as a player you'd be naive to think that, um, you know, that, that won't affect you. 
The Twins concede it's, like, it's unlikely they'll continue as Bulldogs in tw into 2019. Racehorse Red Zell is set to defend his title in the world's richest turf race. Red Zell's Chinese conglomerate owners reached a deal to run the gelding in the Sydney event. He is the third so far to confirm an appearance at the 12-horse field. The $13 million race will be run in October during the Sydney Spring Carnival. The race entrance fee is $600,000 per horse. Megan Dennis has all the weather details next. And when it comes to fashion galas, there's nothing quite like the Met. Hello, time to take a look at the weather. It was a cold and gloomy day in Brisbane today with scattered showers right across the southeast. But you should be able to hang up those umbrellas towards the end of the week. It was a mild day across the southeast today. Brisbane had a low of 18 overnight before reaching a top of 23. The Gold Coast rose to 23 degrees, 24 on the sunny coast. Ipswich was cloudy and 24. Looking around the country now, it'll be sunny in Sydney, Canberra and Perth tomorrow with tops in the low to mid 20s. Showers will be developing in Hobart and Adelaide and a sunny day in Darwin. It'll be mostly sunny in the north of the Sunshine State tomorrow with a top of 30 degrees in Cairns and 31 in Townsville. There'll be showers further south in Bundaberg with an expected top of 28. If you're heading out on the water tomorrow, expect 10 to 15 knot south-south easterlies and seas to below one metre. The sun will show its face at 6.17. There will be showers on the Goldie tomorrow with a top of 27. And the outlook on the Sunshine Coast is much the same. Looking ahead at the rest of the week in Brisbane, possible showers Wednesday with a warm top of 28. Then sunshine as we head into the weekend, 28 on Thursday and 26 degrees on Friday. That's the weather for now. Back to you, Tom. Thanks, Megan. The world has a new Pope. A religious-themed Met Gala had celebrities out showing their heavenliest bodies. Rihanna took this year's theme literally, turning up in an embellished Pope's outfit. Inspired by the latest exhibition at the Met's Costume Institute, guests were asked to dress around fashion and the Catholic imagination. There were angels, or more accurately, Katy Perry under a huge set of wings. Lily Aldridge had her moment in the limelight in a bright yellow dress by Ralph Lauren. Singer Lana Del Rey stunned in a crystal embellished Gucci gown paired with statement headpieces. Bella Hadid, Ariana Grande and Amber Heard all gave their interpretation on the theme. The Met Gala is in its 73rd year of showcasing decadent dresses. This year's exhibition among its most controversial. Really focusing on the idea of storytelling within the Catholic Church, uh, storytelling and the idea of metaphor is something very inherent um, to telling the story of the Bible. The event is organised by US Vogue editor Anna Winter. With the fashion icon reportedly leaving her role, this year's Met will be one for the record books. Kaylee Carew, QUT News. That brings you up to date with QUT News. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.